Section 2, question 1 of the 2017 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. A student is on a stationary train and the train now accelerates along a straight level track. The student uses an app on a phone to measure the acceleration of the train. Part A says the train accelerates uniformly at 0.32 metres per second every second for 25 seconds. And for one mark, we've got to state what is meant by the acceleration of 0.32 metres per second every second. Of one mark and stating it, all you have to say is that the train is going to increase its velocity or its speed by 0.32 metres per second every second of its journey. So we can have this little table here we'll reveal, we can see we can have time here and we can have velocity here. Now you don't have to do this, this may just give you a bit of background information about what acceleration is. So at time zero seconds, it's going to be at rest, zero, because the train is not accelerating, it's at rest. One second later, it's going to have a velocity of 0.32 metres per second. That's the definition of acceleration. Every second, its speed, its velocity is going to increase by that amount, 0.32 metres per second every second. So two seconds later, what's going to be this velocity? Yes, you've guessed it. It's going to be 0.64 metres per second. It's increased its velocity by a further 0.32. The word uniformly means it's going to go up in these steps, these 0.32 metres per second steps through the length of its journey. So at three seconds, I think you can guess that the velocity is going to be equal to 0.96 metres per second. Now, that's all you have to state for one mark, that uh, what is meant by acceleration of 0.32 metres per second every second is quite simply, its velocity will increase by 0.32 metres per second every second of its journey. And a graph can be shown to show that's the case. There you can see a graph of the first 25 seconds of that train's journey, and that's what we mean by uniform acceleration. It's a constant acceleration all the way up. Remember, acceleration is going to be the gradient of the velocity time graph or the speed time graph there. So the gradient is going to be the same gradient all the way through that journey. That's what we mean by uniform acceleration. And you can see that every second of that journey, the speed is going to increase by 0.32 metres per second every second. Question 1, part A, part 2. Calculate the distance travelled by the train in the 25 seconds. Well, we know the train is accelerating with a constant acceleration of 0.32 metres per second every second. And it's doing that for 25 seconds. Now, there's two ways we can do this. We can just rely on our kinematic equations and plug in the values we've got. Or we can do it with looking at the graph version of what we've got from our previous definition. So we know then that the graph will look something like that. At 25 seconds into the journey, it will have a certain speed. And we can work that speed out by just simply putting down V is going to equal to U plus AT. We know U is going to be zero because the train starts off stationary. And we know that acceleration is going to be 0 0.32. It's a uniform acceleration, so therefore we can just multiply that by 25 seconds and we can get the speed of the train at that particular time, and that comes out to be 8 metres per second. Now, we know that's going to be the speed at 25 seconds. Now, if we find the area of that velocity time graph, we can find the displacement of the train. And that's quite easy to do, because the area of it is this part in here. And we know the base of the triangle is 25, and we do know that the height of the triangle is going to be the 8 metres per second. So this height is going to be 8 metres per second up here. So therefore, the area which we're looking at is going to give us the displacement. And therefore, the area is going to be quite simply a half times the base times the height. That's going to give us the, the actual area of that triangle. So we'll put that into our, our value here. The area is going to equal to 1 half times the base, the base is 25 seconds, and I'm going to multiply that by 8, which is going to be the height of the triangle, and that comes out to be equal to 100. So therefore, the displacement is going to be 100 metres, and that's it done for you. So that's just relying on the graph, displacement is going to be 100 metres. Now, if you want to stick to the equation method, there's no harm in that. You can just simply plug in 
all your known all your unknown variables u the starting speeds uh, v the final speed a the acceleration capital s the displacement and t and we know that u is equal to zero meters per second because that's the train stationary we don't know v we don't we do know the acceleration 0 0.32 meters per second minus 2 and we want to find out the distance and we're told the time is going to be 25 seconds so we have got u having got v we have got a we have to find s and we've got t so you can work out then the equation to use it's going to be s is going to equal to ut plus a half at squared and we know that the first part of that is going to be zero because the train is stationary. So zero times 25 seconds. And it's going to be plus a bracket here, one half times 0 0.32, that's acceleration, multiplied by the square of the time, 25 squared. And if we do that in a calculator, we're going to get an answer of 100. So that's going to be the displacement after 25 seconds. It's exactly the same answer when we did it with the graph using the area of the graph. So that's two ways to gain your three marks. You can work out the graph method. Doing the graph method, you have to work out the final speed. And that's only a wee bit drawback with that one. Once you've got that, you can work out the area quite simply. Gives you displacement area is 100 meters. Or you can just simply put all the data down, U, V, A, S, and T, fill in all the data and search for a kinematic equation that you can use. And that comes out to be S equals UT plus a half AT squared. Whichever method you use, you're still going to get your three marks for that question if you get your 100 metres. Question 1, continued part B. Later in the journey, the train is travelling at a constant speed as it approaches a bridge. A horn on the train emits sound of frequency 270 hertz. The frequency of the sound heard by a person standing on the bridge is 290 hertz. The speed of sound in the air is 340 metres per second and for three marks we have to calculate the speed of the train. Well it's going to be a Doppler problem so we head over to our high relationship sheet and we bring over our Doppler equation like that. And we know that F0 is what the person is going to hear, the frequency the person is going to hear, that's observed frequency. Fs is the frequency emitted by the source. V is the speed of sound, which we're told is 340 meters per second. And Vs is going to be the speed of the train. So, which one do we use, plus or minus in the denominator? Well, we know as the train is approaching us, it's going to give us, the observer is going to hear a higher frequency. So that must mean that the denominator must be small to give the whole fraction a big value. So we have to choose the minus version of that. Another way of thinking about it is as the train approaches you, its distance between you and the train is decreasing, therefore we use a minus. If it's the opposite way about, if the train is moving away from you, the distance between you and the train is increasing, plus you'd use the plus one. So now we know we're going to have to use the minus one. We can write down the equation of choice, the observed frequency is equal to the frequency of the sound, the, the source times V, speed of sound, divided by V minus Vs. And V subscript S is the speed of the train. Now, a wee bit of hard algebra to do here. Well, it's not really hard. It just means we have to be careful how we arrange things. And our first move is this. Take F0 and divide by Fs. And if we divide Fs on the other side, it cancels out that Fs. And we're left with the basic fraction, V minus Vs just like that. Now at this stage you can start to put in the numbers if you prefer to put the numbers in and work your way through by cross multiplication. So F0 is the frequency which the person standing bridge is going to hear so that's going to be 290. So we're going to have 290 divided by the frequency which is made by the horn which is 270 and that's going to equal to the speed of sound 340 divided by 340, take away Vs, and it's Vs which we're after. Now at this point we can cross multiply, but before we do that we can make things a bit easier for ourselves. We can say 290 divided by 270 in our calculator gives us something 1.074. So we reduce the left hand side to just a single number. So that's going to be 340 divided by 
bracket 340 minus Vs. So now we can cross multiply and we have a simple bracket to do. I'll take this over here. We have 1.074 times 340 minus Vs. And that's what really we're after. And that's going to equal to 340 on its own. Now we multiply things out, we're going to have the following. 1.074 times 340 is going to give us 365 and we'll put down the decimal 1.6. Take away 1.074 and we'll multiply that with Vs. And that's going to go to 340. So now we've got a kind of linear equation, a simple equation where we can just move things about and solve for Vs. And to do that, we have to take the minus 1.074 Vs over to the right hand side and take the 340 over to the left hand side. And we're left with this sum here 365.16. Take away 340 and we have taken the 1.074 over the other side to give us Vs. Now that makes things a lot easier for us because if we bracket the 365. 0.16 and we're subtracting 340 from it. We can do that in a calculator to get Vs on its own. We must divide by 1.074. So divide by 1.074 and that's going to give us the speed of the train. And if we do that in a calculator, we get that Vs is going to be equal to 23.4 meters per second. And to keep things into two significant figures, therefore write the speed of the train is going to be 23 metres per second. And that's a reasonable answer for speed of the train. Part 2. The train continues to sound its horn as it passes under the bridge. Explain why the frequency of the sound heard by the person standing on the bridge decreases as the train passes under the bridge and then moves away. And you may wish to use a diagram for one mark. Well, we start off with a diagram of the observer on top of the bridge and we draw a picture of the wave fronts coming from the horn at the front of the train. Now, remember the train's moving. This is just a still shot of what's happening. The train is moving and you can see that at the front of the train, you're going to have a lot more waves crushed together because the horn is catching up with the waveforms that it produced. At the back of the train, you can see that the wave fronts are much further apart, and that shows the fact that the horn is moving away from the wave fronts that it's produced. And this is what we have uh, called the. This is what we get when we get the Doppler effect. So at the front of the train, you're going to get more waves produced per second as the train approaches the observer, and therefore you're going to get a high frequency sound. But as the train passes by, you're going to get less waves per second and therefore you're going to get a lower frequency. So as the train moves towards the observer, you can see the following begin to happen. As it approaches the observer, you can see the observer is going to detect more waves per second for a high frequency. But as the train moves away from him, he's going to, in fact, hear less waves per second. And that means a lower frequency. And that's all due to this Doppler effect the th with the horn catching up the waves at the front as it approaches and the uh, wave fronts at the back moving away from the horn as it recedes into the distance. So that's a diagram you use to explain at the front as the train approaches. More waves per second, higher frequency. And at the back of the train, where it's going towards observer, less waves per second. And that's going to give a lower frequency. And that's why when the train moves away, you get this decrease in the frequency.